Thank you, Dr. Atkins. Well, one of Houston's most popular outdoor spots started as a nine hole golf course for convalescent soldiers near Camp Logan in 1912. Today, the Memorial Golf Course is back on the PGA Tour and back at challenging everyday citizens. Great things happening at the Houston Parks Department is just, well, par for the course. Joining us with more is the director of Houston Parks and Recreation, Kenneth Allen. Good morning. Good morning, Deborah. How you doing? Good. All right. For people who don't know that Memorial Park Golf Course, the Astros Golf Foundation funded a renovation. It's one of the best municipal courses in the nation, and that meant the PGA came back. Correct. PGA came back in big fashion. You know, as a result of the tour, there's some definitely great benefits, not only to uh, everyday golfers, but to kids at every skill level. Yeah, so there's the Chevron Center for Education and Golf. And so what does that do? Oh, it, it'll actually give uh, kids the opportunity to come in and not only play the game, but also learn the game and learn a little bit about STEMs in terms of uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. We can apply these principles to the game of golf um, and give some real examples and, and engage young minds. In fact, with that game of golf, it teaches so many other things. You know, it's challenging, right? It, it, it tells you that you got to have patience. You can have a great game one, a great game one day, and not the next day. So you got to get up and try all over again. Uh, the program also provides scholarships. It's a year-round educational center. Um, there's some things that you've already done out there, but some other things that you're doing coming this weekend. Oh, absolutely. You know, in terms of patience and perseverance and sportsmanship, all, all those principles will be taught in the center. Starting this weekend, we're playing a uh, citywide, well, not just a city golf tournament for youth from basically neighborhood parks all over the city, exposing them to this great amenity. So we'll have a little fun this weekend starting at nine o'clock. We'll have uh, youth in partnership with PAL, Police Ap uh, Activities League, the Houston Police Department, we're bringing out kids and we're bringing out kids from our community centers just to expose them to this experience. Yeah, now this is a, a booked experience already, but more events are coming as you know, COVID kind of, we work around that. Um, one of the other things that you did recently last weekend was the Arbor Day celebration. Yes, we got, we got a little dirty, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had the opportunity to plant over a thousand trees in partnership with Apache and Trees of Houston and the uh, Nat. National uh, Leadership School of uh, Texas, which is right across the street from the area that we were planning. But uh, it was a wonderful day. Yeah. We had a great day. And Kenneth, I just want to kind of go into who you are. You, you grew up here. You grew up around parks. What did parks do for you as a child? And uh, why are they so important in any city like Houston? Well, I'm definitely a, a parks kid, and I understand the benefits of uh, what we do in this profession and in this industry. You know, growing up in Houston, I, I frequent McGregor Park, Townwood Park, Sunnyside Park. I was at all those parks, and on many occasions I had to walk or ride my bike. So uh, going, growing up in Houston and visiting parks, you know, I had a chance to get involved with sports, uh, some adult mentoring. It, it just helped me grow as a, as, a, as a young kid and develop, not just physically, but mentally. So, and I've had my kids in parks programs as well. Yeah. And I'm still currently participating in parks. Well, well, it keeps changing. We have these, the beautiful Arboretum, we have the trails, and you know, there's a reason why parks were essential during the quarantine. Oh, absolutely. I mean, with, with the quarantine, one thing that we were able to take advantage of is, is open parks and open space. You know, we're, we're seeing attendance numbers jump off the roof more so now uh, with COVID in terms of golf, tennis, in terms of our trail system, in terms of people just being out, wanting to be outdoors because you can feel relatively safe and you can keep your social distancing intact uh, and just get out and enjoy the sun and the scenery. So parks is a very important part of day-to-day -day life. And this, this epidemic has definitely demonstrated that even more so. Yeah. Now, with COVID, obviously, there are certain things like playing basketball games and stuff like that that were not encouraged. And we, I, I, are we still in that situation where we don't want people doing kind of group activities? We're still in that phase. I mean, our, our mayor has been very, very, uh, uh, very careful about opening everything up. I mean, we want to we want to stay safe and high contact sports using you know the same equipment. Uh, it's just something that we're not quite ready based on the numbers. We want to keep everybody safe, not only the public but staff. 
you know, we've, we've had cases where we've had to dial back a little bit and then uh, hopefully soon, once the vaccine takes effect, um, we're able to, we'll be able to open up a little bit more. But yeah. Mayor has made it clear. He, he want to protect our citizens. Yeah, and because we have so many more people in the parks, unfortunately, we have a lot more trash in the parks. So I just want to remind people, if you got trash, bag it up, take it with you, or make sure that it's stuffed down deep into those trash receptacles so we can keep the parks beautiful for everybody. Kenneth, thank you very much. Yeah, thank and you. And I want to thank you for all of your support. And I've been an ambassador of parks all these years. Uh -huh. You've been a You've been great to work with, so thank you so much. And thank you. And thank you all very much for joining us. Have a great day.